Namaste. So, in the previous episode of Atma Bodha, we were talking about the relativity of consciousness. In other words, people see things differently in different states of consciousness. And the most straightforward example is when you're in Jagrat consciousness, sensory consciousness, consciousness of the world, you see the world full of objects and time and space and cause and effect and all that good stuff. But when you're in dream consciousness, in Svapna, all of that disappears. And all you see is the dream body, the dream world, which, of course, exists only in the mind. <laughs> so, actually, they're both illusory. They're both like dreams because they're temporary. When you go to sleep at night, the sensory world, the outward world, Jagrat, disappears. And when you wake up in the morning, the dream world disappears. Or even during a dream, it can shift from one location or one state to another, almost randomly. So anyway, dreams are temporary. Reality is eternal. So, of course, in the lower states of consciousness, what you're perceiving is only illusion. It's only a dream. It's not until sushupti, when you enter sushupti with awareness in deep meditation, and neti neti, gradually get rid of all the other stuff until there's nothing left, and you're in the void. What's really happening is you are nullifying the upadis. You're saying at each time a phenomenon comes up, like there's a mosquito, neti neti. <laughs> you reject it. Not this, not this, not this. On and on and on until there's nothing left. That's the void, shunyata. So in shunyata, there are no upadis. There is only the self. So sooner or later, <laughs> the self is going to reveal itself. If only through the exercise of the jhanas, as the Buddha taught, that you should first of all get situated in empty space, infinite space, space that's so vast, the whole material creation disappears. Then there is ultimate consciousness, infinite consciousness permeating the infinite space. Otherwise, how do you know it's infinite? Well, whose consciousness is that? Who, who else is? <laughs> Only the self. So now, this is the difficulty. When one is in Jagrat, one thinks of I in terms of the body. And when one is in Svapna, one thinks of I in terms of the mind and thoughts. Take a look at this. This is a variation of the chart of consciousness. The four states of consciousness, Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya, on the left. And in the next column, they're objects. So, if you think of yourself, I, in Jagrat, you're going to think of a material object perceptible through the senses, and that's the body. Similarly, in Svapna consciousness, you're going to identify I, with the mind, I think, I know, and so on. But in sushupti, you're going to see shunyata, nothingness, emptiness, uh, not even space. 
is nothing. And this leads to the concept of I as everything, because one's consciousness fills the entire infinite space. But when one gets to Turiya, Turiya means there is no more I. There is only we. You know, like the Rastafarians say, I and I. The individual soul or ego and the Supreme Lord, Brahman, are both present in the body, in the heart, in the intelligence seated in the heart. But what happens when you transcend even that, even intelligence? What happens when you go beyond to the space where nothing can be known? Then there's no more I, no more small I. <laughs> there's only the big I, capital I, the real I, Brahman. Because when there is duality, as it were, then one smells something, one sees something, one hears something, one speaks something, one thinks something, one knows something. But when, to the knower of Brahman, everything has become the self, then what should one smell, and through what? What should one see, and through what? What should one hear, and through what? What should one speak, and through what? What should one think, and through what? What should one know, and through what? Through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? Through what, O oh Maitreyi, should one know the knower? So when there is duality, then there is the possibility of having an individual self, an I, but when one transcends duality, when all duality is put away, then in non-duality, there are no boundaries, there are no parts. So it's impossible to have an individual identity, an ego, an I. There is only Brahman. Brahman is the self, the self of all. But that doesn't mean that when we realize Brahman, we remain aware of all as separate individual things. We are simply aware of ourself as Brahman, the whole, without parts. So there's no consciousness in Brahman because there's no division into subject and object. The four states of consciousness, Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya, are discriminated based on their objects. Actually, there's only one type of consciousness, and that's Turiya. That's the substrate of all the others. When that consciousness is directed towards sense objects, it's Jagrat. When it's directed towards dreams and thoughts, it's Svapna. When it's directed towards emptiness, it's sushupti. And when its only object is itself, that's turiya. So, in other words, the concept of I looks radically different in the different states of consciousness. So, when one realizes Brahman, due to this relativity of consciousness, there is no more I, in the sense of an individual being. That upadi is wiped out long ago in sushupti. So there's no possible way that someone who has realized Brahman, realized Turiya, is going to claim, I am God. Because both the concept of I and the concept of God are simply upadis, superimposed 
on Brahman. Brahman is the substrate. Yet, due to identification, we mix the two up. We think that our so-called I, individuality, is a real thing because it is in relationship with the senses and sense organs. But actually, <laughs> that's the proof that it's unreal because those things are always changing. The only thing that's real is the conscious substrate, the basic awareness of Turiya. That never changes. Only the objects change. Sense objects the mind and thoughts, or emptiness, nothingness, no objects. So when we cease identifying with the changing objects of consciousness, consciousness itself disappears because consciousness is a triple huh, object, subject, and relationship. Therefore, in Turiya, in self-realization, there is no consciousness as such. That's why the Turiya is only an interim stage, actually, until the end of the body. When one is enlightened, one lives out the prarabdha karma, the ripened karma that is due to fructify in this life. But the rest of the karma... Uh, the karma, the store of karma, and the karma of the future life is all wiped out. Why? Because there is no individual I to receive it. See, karma is a cause. And the cause operates on an object. The object is the individual self. Small I, huh? small s on the self. <laughs> if that disappears, then there's nothing for it to operate on. So there's no more karma. That's liberation. That's what liberation is. And that is what we can obtain or attain or realize through this process of conscious self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.